It's been six months since I originally came up with the idea to build a Powerhack G4 Quicksilver. Since then, I've been through so many different ideas, loads of planning, and massive thought processes, and we're finally out the other end with a system that is worthy of being my main machine. It's literally that awesome. Going into this project, I was pretty much blind. I'd never built a Hackintosh before, I'd never modded a case before, so everything was new to me. Of course, I've worked with G4s extensively in the past and I've also built PCs, but this project was still quite a bit different to both of those. In this video, I'm going to fully conclude the project with my final thoughts, benchmarks, chats about the system, and your questions answered. This is everything you need to know about my Hackintosh project. Before we get started, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone that supported me throughout this project. That includes everyone that donated, huge, huge thanks, and of course, all of you guys for watching. Without you, my viewers, this would have been totally impossible. So I hope you've enjoyed this awesome project. So this is the actual boot up of my Hackintosh in real time with a single SSD. That is a Samsung 850 Pro SSD. Yes, I decided to ditch my RAID 0 idea. I'm a little bit gutted, but it was for the best in the end. I may talk about it in more detail later, but to cut a long story short, it was much more hassle than it's worth, and these are already very quick drives to begin with. Because of these nice fast SSDs, we get a great boot up time, as you can see. The RAID 0 didn't make much of a difference at all, just a couple of seconds, so I really don't miss the RAID 0 setup and boot up at all. So jumping straight into a screen recording, and it's a miracle that I've done this, guys, so enjoy it while it lasts. Um, as you can see, in About This Mac, we are running OS X Yosemite, of course, version 10.10.3. This is the latest version as of recording this video, so we're all up to date and everything is working. As you can see here, it still says Mac Pro Early 2008, and we still have the sort of X in the circle picture thing there on the left. I have not been into about this Mac to edit it yet. It is pretty easy from what I've seen, but I have not tried to do it yet. I will, of course, be changing the Mac Pro Early 2008 to Powerhack G4 Quicksilver and getting that nice picture of the Quicksilver there instead of the OS X logo. That'll be absolutely awesome. As for the rest of the specifications, of course, I will leave them untouched because the specs that are listed here are my exact specifications. So taking a look at the processor, we have a 3.7 gigahertz Intel Core i7. Now this seems to fluctuate between 3.7 gigahertz and 3.9 gigahertz every time I boot up the machine. This does have something to do with the CPU and I guess the turbo boost or the power management or something. I'm not 100% sure and I haven't quite figured that out yet, um, but that's something to figure out in the future. As of yet, it has not caused any issues and this is a blazing machine anyway, so um, it doesn't really worry me at all. So moving on to displays and graphics, as you guys can see, it's showing up as a Dell 2009W display. I do not use these as my main monitors anymore. I use three U2412Ms and the graphics card also detects these and names them appropriately. I have tested it a little bit in the past. Powering the Dell 2009W at the moment is the GeForce GTX 960 with two gigabytes of VRAM, of course. This is the most beast graphics card that I've ever owned. I know there's loads of you out there that are, you know, top-notch gamers and you've got your crazy 
you know, uh, SLI 980 setup and everything, but this is the most powerful card that I've ever owned, and it is absolutely rock solid so far. As soon as I got it working properly, it was great. Now, I am running on the NVIDIA web drivers, of course, because OS X doesn't have any native drivers for this card yet, but that's the way I choose to run my NVIDIA cards anyway. I run the GT640 in the Mac Pro with the web drivers because I find them a little bit better and more stable, and of course, I have no choice of the 960. I'm running off the web drivers, and everything is working perfectly. It detects displays, you can use all of the display outputs. I haven't tested audio over HDMI, I know a lot of people use this, but I personally do not use audio over HDMI, so I have not tested it. But in terms of raw power of the graphics card, only time will tell, but I do know that it should perform like a beast, and for the tiny amount that I've used this machine on my triple monitor setup, expect more videos on this in the future by the way, for the tiny amount of time that I've used it with that amount of pixels, I I can notice a massive, massive improvement over my GT640 that's in my Mac Pro. This card is going to be beast, and one little other note that I will say about it, it is surprisingly quiet. I was a little bit worried about stepping up to a graphics card of this level, I thought it was going to be a little bit louder, but I can't hear it at all, and just like the machine as a whole, this Hackintosh, this graphics card, everything is really damn quiet, and I'm very, very happy with that. Moving on to drives, as you guys can see, there are three visible drives but there are four in the machine and that is of course because my two Western Digital Caviar Black hard drives are in RAID 0 giving me a total of two terabytes. Of course, half the reliability but double the speed. I didn't go with the RAID 0 on my SSDs as you can see but I did on my hard drives and that will give me a very fast scratch disk. Now you guys can see the other SSD sitting there pretty much empty. That is now labeled SSD storage. I'm currently not sure what I'm gonna use it for because of course I'm now only using one SSD as my boot drive, but I think I may use it as a sort of scratch disk, but I'll offload onto the other scratch disk and I'll import and edit straight off that SSD because that will be unbelievably fast editing speeds. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, of course, a few people are gonna suggest that I put Windows on on it because it's a spare SSD and this is a PC so I can easily run Windows and it would be awesome with the 960 because I could play some wicked games. And at the moment, I'm not really ready to put Windows on the system because I don't use Windows for anything. I am truly a Mac user, so Windows would be for gaming only. And I get so little time to game anyway, I either game on my Wii U and, you know, I love doing so, and I've got games that I'm halfway through on my Wii U, and any gaming time I get, I spend on that console. Or I spend it retro gaming on something like the N64 or Super Nintendo. So, I really can't justify an entire SSD to installing Windows. But, on the other side of things, I can't justify a hundred plus pounds SSD just sitting in my system doing nothing. So I'll probably use it for something really quick in the Hackintosh, most likely video editing, but of course, 128 gig is nowhere near enough for a proper scratch disk. Um, if you want to access loads of clips and stuff at the same time, so I really don't know, it's a tricky one. But there are the drives, that is the remaining space that I have left on my boot drive after installing the majority of my applications, apart from Adobe Photoshop and a couple of other apps. So as you guys can see, pretty good space there, I am pleased, I have not started putting all of my data on the Hackintosh yet, that is to come when I start using it as my main machine, more to come on that later in the video. Time to talk RAM! Um, to put it bluntly, this is the most RAM that I've ever had in a system. This is my maximum amount of RAM ever that I've ever had, times by four, which is awesome. So, uh, eight gigabytes is what I have in my Mac Pro, eight gigabytes is what I have in my MacBook Pro with Retina display, and now I have 32 gigabytes in my Hackintosh. Not only is it a lot of RAM, it is the fastest RAM I've ever had, 1600 megahertz. I believe it's 1333 megahertz in my Retina MacBook Pro, I can't quite remember at this moment in time, but I'm upgrading from 800 megahertz DDR2 to 1600 megahertz um, DDR3 in my Hackintosh from my Mac Pro, which is of course double the speed, and of course DDR2 to DDR3 is awesome. So I've got much more RAM, much faster RAM. I'm going to notice a colossal difference. I'm not even struggling for RAM on my Mac Pro. A lot of people that use Final Cut 10 and do YouTube and stuff will say that they do struggle. But OS 10 has changed the way that it addresses memory in the last couple of re revisions. And 8 gigabyte is pretty much enough. I can say this with my hand on my heart. 8 gigs is still enough RAM to edit 1080p and Final Cut and multitask all at the same time. 16 gigabyte would be the icing on the cake, but I've got 8 in both of my systems and I cope absolutely magnificently, but 
I've got more ram now, so that is awesome. This would not have been possible without a donation. I would have gone for 16 if I was building this myself, but 32 gigs of ram, killer stuff, and I can't wait to take advantage of it. It's time to whip out our first benchmark, and that is Geekbench. More specifically, Geekbench 3 running in 64-bit mode. So yes, I did purchase it for the use in this video, so uh, you're welcome. But it will come in handy more in the future, as you guys know. I'm now the proud owner of a Geekbench 3 license. Geekbench has become pretty much a standard benchmark on Macs, as you guys know. It's great because you can compare your score to your friend's score or other people's scores or whatever. And it's all online, so it's really great to compare. Um, I'll speed this up a little bit and we will take a look at the score. 3,562 for a single core score and 11,592 for a multi-core score. That's pretty crappy. Um, but then, of course, I remembered I was screen recording, so let's take a look at our score without a screen recording. 4,012 on a single core score and 15,074 on the multi-core score. That is a lot better. Of course, Benchmarks fluctuate quite a lot, so if I tested that, I could get less tomorrow, or I could have had more yesterday, but it is around that score. If you're wondering um, if this is my legit score and you're doubting me in any kind of way, I've taken a photo of my score in the context of my desktop because I know these screenshots don't prove everything. The screen recording did dramatically decrease my score that much, but that was, of course, because QuickTime was hogging the CPU while I was performing the benchmark. So, as you guys can pretty much tell, um, you're not getting a Mac that performs that fast for the price that I paid for this Hackintosh any day soon. So that is pretty much wonderful. And this is half the reason why I love the whole Hackintosh scene. You can get these crazy fast Hackintoshes. This has got a 4770 in it, you know, a really, really speedy desktop i7. And it's a fraction of the price of a big Mac Pro or a big iMac. So I love it. This is, this is a wonderful result. I'm so pleased. One of my goals in this build was to have a very, very fast set of discs, as fast as I could afford. So let's whip out black magic and take a look. This first score is for my SSD, and this was measuring the boot drive. So the second SSD set as SSD storage will probably be a fraction quicker because it's not reading the programs and OS and applications from it. 452.2 megabytes a second read. Sorry, write, and 519.8 megabytes a second read. That is a fast SSD. So you can pretty much call it, depending on the weather and depending what kind of day it is, it is around 500 megabytes a second read and write speed. Um, these SSDs are blazing and reliable and very quick, and benchmarks are benchmarks. Now, one thing that I do miss is when I had two of these in RAID 0, I got one gigabyte per second read and write speed which was colossal, and that is one thing that I'll miss. And even though people said RAID 0 isn't everything and it really won't make that much of a difference, it made that much of a difference to the benchmark, so even if I didn't notice it in every day today, it would still be quicker. But these are very, very fast SSDs, and I have performed this test and got 20 or 30 megs more. It literally does depend on what you've been using the disk for that day, blah, 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 all these different things. Like I said, benchmarks are benchmarks. But if you take a look at all the tick boxes below, when I was running RAID 0, all of them were green, but now some of them are not. It's okay, this is still a lot faster than my Mac Pro. Not quite as fast as my MacBook Pro with Retina Display and PCIe attached storage. My goal was to be as fast or faster than that, but it is not too bad at all, and this system is very, very snappy to use. So I am really, really pleased. One thing that shocked me was the lovely score that I got from my Western Digital Caviar Black Drives in RAID 0. 320.9 megabytes a second write and 336.6 megabytes per second read. I was so, so pleased with this result. And this is pretty much the speed of my SSD in my Mac Pro at the moment, give or take a few megabytes. So for a hard drive RAID array, this is really, really good. The Western Digital Caviar Black is a nice speedy drive. It's not a crazy awesome drive by any means, but it is my drive of choice. I've used them for a long time now and I find them to be very reliable and I do enjoy using them. They are a bit loud, but mine have been great. 
So I've got two more brand new ones in my Hackintosh. Hopefully the story will be the same for those. Now, because these aren't my boot drives, RAID 0 does not make a difference with these whatsoever. I've put them under RAID 0 in software and OS 10, and as you can see, it's really, really helped the speed. It is more than double the speed of a single Western Digital Caviar Black running on its own. So, of course, this will be a very speedy scratch disk. Now, when I announced that I was going to put a couple of RAID 0 setups in my Hackintosh, a lot of people panicked, and they started talking about reliability. Now, RAID 0, because you're using two drives, it is half as reliable as using a single drive. But a single drive in this day and age is still quite reliable. Now, you'd back up regardless of whether you're using one drive or whether you're using two drives. So, it's no big deal. As long as you keep your backups organized and you keep regular backups, running a RAID 0 is no more dangerous than running a regular drive. Yes, it could fail, one of the drives could fail, both of the drives could fail, but at the same time, none of the drives could fail. So, if it's a boot drive, it's a little bit of a pain, and this is one of the reasons why I ditched the RAID 0 as my boot drive. But using it as a scratch disk that will regularly be backed up, there's no issues, I'm not worried about it at all, and it is definitely worth it for the speed. The first graphics benchmark that we're going to run is Heaven. Now, I'm running this one because I absolutely love the way it looks. The first preset that we're going to use is Extreme. I basically just clicked Extreme, left everything the way it was, and let it run. So that is a resolution of 1600, I believe, by 900. And that is with everything on Ultra and Extreme by the looks of it. Now, of course, I could not screen record the benchmark because this would impact on the results. So I had to film my monitor. And even through the camera and through my less than amazing quality, old school by today's standards, Dell 2009W, you can see how wonderful this benchmark looks. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So if we zoom in and take a closer look at the benchmark and at the frame rate, which is pretty much the most important thing, we are fluctuating around 37 or 38 FPS at this resolution on extreme settings, which is absolutely awesome. But of course, we are not running at the proper resolution for this display, so it is time to step out of this benchmark and take a little look at this benchmark running at 1680 by 1050. Now, one note that I would like to make is this did not ramp up the graphics card fan as much as I thought it would. The graphics card is not audible when you're sitting at the desktop when it's idle in day-to-day uh, -day tasks, but when running, when I was running this benchmark, it ramped up to the point where I could hear it, but the system is on my desk and my head was right next to it. So it was pretty awesome to hear that the graphics card was not spewing out a load of horrible noises. I remember running this benchmark on my old gaming PC with a 5770 and then much, uh, then later a 6870. And those cards would get very loud when running this in high settings, but the 960 seems to run it okay. Now I know it's different on Mac because Macs don't have DirectX and this isn't the most ideal benchmark to take a look at, but as you can just about see now, as I'm zooming in, around 32 to 33 FPS when running this at the native resolution of the display, 1680 by 1050, not too bad at all. You can imagine a tiny bit more slowdown, maybe 30 FPS, 28 to 30 FPS running at 1080p, um, but I am very, very pleased with this. So the next benchmark that I wanted to show you was Cinebench. I did have it lined up and installed, ready to go, but unfortunately it would not open. I don't think that's the fault of my Hackintosh, I just don't think it runs properly on the latest version of Yosemite. Um, graphics benchmarking is a bit of a grey area when it comes to Macs, and there's not really a standard out there. And because the, this machine won't be used for gaming, and I've never done any graphics benchmarking stuff on any of my main systems before, I'm going to leave it there, but what I will say is I will return to graphics benchmarking in a future video when I've got the GT640, no, when I've got the GTX 960 hooked up to all three of my 1920 by 1200 monitors, and then we'll get a real idea of the performance that I'm getting out of the GPU. So only time will tell in terms of GPU performance. Apologies that I could not get that graphics benchmark loaded, but it is all good. You will see more stuff in the future.
So what can we grasp from all of these benchmarks? Well, we can pretty much say that the Hackintosh is almost double the speed of my Mac Pro in every aspect, apart from the video card. The GTX 960 should be around three to four times faster than the GT640. So it's no doubt that the Hackintosh is a massive, massive upgrade over my Mac Pro. The system is also faster than my MacBook Pro with Retina display. Of course, it is much closer to its age and much closer to its specifications, but everything in the Retina MacBook Pro is laptop grade and everything in this desktop is desktop grade. So of course you have the speed benefits there. And of course, one big factor, there is no dedicated GPU in my Retina MacBook Pro. As I have said throughout the video, benchmarks are only benchmarks. The real way to tell how this system performs is to use it on a daily basis. Now that this Hackintosh is ready and finally up and running, it is my chance to deploy this system as the centerpiece of my main setup and use this machine for all of my daily tasks. Now, if you're watching this video a few months, weeks, years down the line, then you can already see a load of videos on my channel dedicated to using this Hackintosh and upgrading this Hackintosh and putting this Hackintosh on my main setup and rejigging my desk setup and all this stuff. But as of the recording of this video, I am still using my Mac Pro because I do have a couple of projects left to finish on my Mac Pro before I switch to using the Hackintosh. But rest assured that I will be using the Hackintosh very, very soon. It is now 110% ready to be used as my main machine. Due to the fact that I'm not using this system as my main machine at the moment, I will be making follow-up videos in the very near future to discuss certain points and aspects in regards to this machine. Certain things that I'll only be able to discover after using it for a certain amount of time. And that does include, of course, real-world speed. I expect most people already know, but in case anyone is curious, I'll just briefly explain why I did not use a RAID 0 setup after all. It was nothing to do with speed. I would have loved to have put my experiment into practice and used RAID 0 as my main system drive. Now I did manage to get OS X up and running on the RAID 0 itself, but as soon as I introduced the GTX 960 into the mix, I could not get the system to comfortably boot with both a RAID 0 and a GTX 960. It is possible, and I know of a way that I could do it now. I have thought of things later on that I could have done, but it was very, very hard. I decided to ditch it because it was a lot of hassle and not worth it, and it will also make updates very, very difficult. So a single SSD is quick enough for me, and I will hold up my hands and say, yes, you guys were right. The RAID 0 was not worth the hassle, but the speed would have been cool. You cannot deny that. Ultimately, I ended up installing OS X with the GTX 960 in place. If anyone wants my advice, that is the easiest way to do it. It'll be very sluggish to go through multi-beasts without NVIDIA drivers, but once you get those downloaded and installed, everything is extremely smooth. Thankfully, I have now found a very easy way that I can install my Hackintosh. I know the exact boot flags that I need to use, so if I have any issues in the future, all I have to do is go through that. And I would like to log how I install sometime in the future, so if I need to update or reinstall for whatever reason, I will show you guys in a future video. One of the last pieces of the puzzle from the last part of the video was, of course, the power button and power LED. I messed up my board, but not as bad as I thought. The power button actually popped off, and that's what was giving me a lot of hassle. So I did salvage another power and LED board from that spare Quicksilver that I had, and that is what is in the system now. My dad soldered it up for me. It is absolutely perfect. The system turns on and off, and the LED works, so that is all you want. And of course, that was the last piece of the puzzle, like I did say. And with that, the install, the working GTX 960, me ditching the RAID 0 and finally accepting that it was a bad idea, the Hackintosh is complete. So that is that everyone, part one, two, three, four, and now part five are complete. All stored away in order, 
in a lovely little convenient playlist on YouTube, sitting there for your viewing pleasure. This has been one of my most fun, exciting, challenging, crazy, awesome, ridiculous, and just whatever adjective you can think of series. It has been incredible. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Of course, everyone, as usual, I will see you in my next video.